training and no guidelines. In fact, the guidelines were purposely removed, Geneva Conventions and so forth. What do you mean? Well, the, the idea, the, 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 the word was spread um, down low, and that's one of the interesting things about talking to these guys is that uh, they were told this, the rules, the old rules that used to apply, the Geneva Conventions are no longer in effect. This was in Afghanistan, and there were a number of rules coming out of the Department of Justice through the Office of Legal Counsel um, that tried to indicate that perhaps in Afghanistan uh, the rules no longer applied, Afghanistan was a failed state, and that ambiguity continued even on into the war in Iraq when, at least according to some people like John Yu, uh, you know, the Geneva Convention should have been in effect. So. Uh, in the field, the message was clear. The gloves are off. Do whatever you need to do to get information. And a lot of military people were deeply upset by this because there are, you know, very clear rules and guidelines that the military has in place in order to forestall and prevent these kind of abuses that we've seen. But the administration, the civilian administration, was taking a very different attitude toward these rules and regulations. And, and what happened uh, to the uh, to the men involved in the actual? Uh uh, beating and death of of uh, of this uh, Afghan driver. Um, some were acquitted, some were convicted, some pled guilty, uh, some served prison time, some were demoted. Um, no officers uh, were ever charged. Only the enlisted man. And um, it's interesting. At the end of the film, you know, there's a there's a law that our Congress passed with the urging of the president called the Military Commissions Act. One of the things in that law is a um, would a, amounts to a get-out-of-jail-free card for members of the administration who may have condoned or enabled some of the things that these lower-down soldiers were convicted for. Uh, you have John Yu in your film, the University of California Berkeley law professor. Explain his significance. Well, John Yu worked for the Office of Legal Counsel, and I would say that in the days after 9-11, when Dick Cheney said it's time to go over to the dark side, which is the other part of the title, um, John Yu was a very can-do guy. He was the guy who had a lot of theories about executive power and the idea that the president, at a time of war, as the commander-in-chief, can do virtually anything. And so he began to churn out opinions in the Office of Legal Counsel that govern what the executive branch in its totality can and can't do. But these opinions went way over the line, as, as many people are recognizing now. One of them was the so-called torture memo, in which he basically defined torture out of existence pulling obscure language from medical statute to try to um, uh, come up with a rationale for why the only thing that could be considered torture was something that intentionally resulted in death or organ failure. Well, that doesn't leave much room for anything, uh, ec you know, anything else. And so, his position at the time? Office of Legal Counsel. He for, was in the Office of Legal Counsel. For a while, then, he became a favorite commentator on the Lair News Hour until until more of the information on these memos came out. We haven't seen him around on the Lair News Hour too often lately. <laughs> Were you surprised by your nomination for the Oscar for this film? Uh, I was uh, elated. Let's put it that way. I mean, this was a very difficult film to make. It also became very personal to me. Um, you know, I included a clip of my father at the very end of the film to whom I dedicated it. He was a naval interrogator in World War II. Um, and he was really deeply upset about what was going on in Abu Ghraib and the news that was coming out about other abuses, because he felt, as a naval interrogator in World War II, that he was standing up for a higher ideal. He got good intelligence. He didn't have to waterboard anybody. Uh, and so I included him in the film, and I dedicated it to him. So after a long, long struggle making this film, it was a tremendous um, pat on the back, if you will, or a tremendous vindication to have it nominated for an Oscar. And do you have any plans to make any strong statements if you win the Oscar? Well, uh, we'll have to see. I mean, there's uh, the Oscars up, um, uh, you know, in the air at the moment because of the Writers Guild strike. But I certainly intend to make my presence felt if I get up there on that podium. How long did it take you to make the film? About a year and a half. Throughout the film, uh, there is this sense of the connection between the deaths. Um, the Afghan driver, you talk about the pulverizing of his body. They told these young soldiers to what? Soften him up? In effect. I mean, part of the problem is what uh, Alberto Mora, the former general counsel of the Navy in the film, calls um, forced drift. Once you 
take away rules and regulations. There is a well-known and documented process that goes on in the human mind where you go further and further and further. When you don't get information from somebody, you apply greater and greater levels of force. Um, these kids were taught one control measure called a perennial strike, which was a knee to the thigh. They did this on poor Dilawar over and over and over again until his legs were literally pulverized. Uh, in fact, the medical examiner said that his legs almost certainly would have had to have been amputated uh, had he lived. So, you know, you can see how one thing leads to another. Alex Gibney, thank you very much for being with us. Congratulations on your Oscar nomination. Let's just hope that the writer's strike is resolved uh, happily so that the Oscars can go on, but more importantly, so that the writers can have their respected position. Thank you so much. Thank you. Alex Gibney is director of Taxi to the Dark Side. This is Democracy Now!, produced by Mike Berkshire, who will produce Sarah Monte, Angela Kamich, Jeffrey Hagerman, Steve Martinez, Nicole Salazar, Robbie Karen, Mike DeFilippo, Miguel Nagero, Peter Curry, our engineer. Special thanks also to Becca Staley, Hugh Grant, Samantha Chambly. I'm Amy Goodman, Juan Gonzalez. Thanks so much for joining us.